This topic is firewall user management. This is the objective for this topic. When we finish this course, we will be able to understand AAI technologies, user authentication technologies, and we shall also see the configurations for user authentication management. This topic is basically break into two parts. First part, we have the user authentication and AAA technical principles. The second part is about user authentication management and application. So what you can see over here is the user authentication background. So all these related activities are actually something has to do with the company or enterprise internet access. For any sort of employee that try to access this particular uh, mentioned website over here, example, gaming website or in relevant applications that are performing downloads or upload process, the data leaks due to some uh, malicious software that resides in user workstations. Pervasive web threads, for example, like Trojans or malware, as well as illegitimate behavior damages group interests, example, some adult website. So the authentication process always run at the beginning of application. So before the permission checks is occur, or any other uh, permission is allowed to proceed. In every enterprise, there will be a lot different system. They may require different types of credential to ascertain a user identity. So the credential that is used will usually is in the form of password and username. The password and username usually is a secret and is securely only known by a certain individual and the system. So the category in which someone may be authenticated are something that the user know, something the user is, as well as something the user has. So when we talk about AAA, or you call it as triple A, so basically the three A stand for authentication, authorizations, and accounting. So this triple A is very useful in multiple scenarios. Let's take an example. Let's say whenever a user tries to access to a particular internet website, before he can do so, he basically need to log in to the network. In this case, the user might need to put in their username and password to perform the dial up to the internet. So when the username and password is authenticated successfully, the firewall will start to authorize the user and grant the respective permissions to the user on what other resources that can be accessed. So during this process, an accounting process will happen to record the user uh, operation as well as the activity. So firstly, let us talk about the first A, authentication. So authentication is basically referring to uh, the identity of user. So to prove an identity of user, basically it comprises with what I know, what I have, and what I am. What I know is basically referring to the information that the user has and the user know 
And that particular information, it could be a credential such as password or PIN. What I have is usually referring to something that the user owns. Example, a bank credit card, a token card, or even a smart card. What I am usually will be uh, referring to biometric related stuff. Example, fingerprint, iris, voice, or even DNA. So when authentication is referring to the identity, then authorization is referring to the level of user. Basically, authorization means that what are the uh, actions or permission that is granted to the user? It is usually has something to do with the access of the control for the particular user on a network. Example, we can authorize a user to access some resources in our environment, or we authorize the user to perform certain activity. Next, the final A, which will stand for accounting. Accounting is something has to do with recording or keep track or for the user. Example, when the user log into the system using their own credential, that is authentication. And what the user can do inside the system, that is authorization. And whatever the user done, how long the user spent in the system, what have the user performed, all this is actually under the accounting. So accounting means the record of activity, regardless in terms of actions, as well as the period of time. So when we talk about these AAI technologies, basically it can be divided into local authentication, server authentications, as well as no authentication. So no authentication is nothing special because it means that there's no authentication is performed on a trusted user. But usually in order for us to have a secure system, we usually will perform authentication regardless it is a local authentication or even a server authentication. For the local authentication, it means that the authentication is performed locally on the gateway. In this case, it will be the firewall. So the firewall itself will store the user credential, such as username and password. And for the server authentication, which means that we have a third party server. That third party server could be an authentication server that might use a radius, LDAP, or Active Directory. So what happened over here is that we actually depending the authentications on the third party authentication server that will store the username and password. Next, let's talk about the uh, third party authentication server. So over here we have Radius. Radius stands for Remote Authentication down in User Service. Radius is a client server based protocol. This is kind of a software that helps to enable the remote access server to communicate with a central server in order for us to authenticate any user that perform the die in and to authorize their access to the requesting system and service. Radius is one of the most common uh, uh, protocol and application that we use to deploy the AAA.
radius also use UDP, user data gram protocol. So in our case over here, you can see that the user basically try to access to the network. Firstly, the user will send the credential, username and password to the USG firewall. So our USG firewall will help the user to send the credential on behalf to the radius server and radius server will check and compare the credentials sent by the user. And if let's say the credentials are correct, the response will be generated by the radius server to indicate that the user has successfully identified themselves. So what you can actually see over here is the uh, message structures of radius This is the radius application scenario in detail. So over here is basically just more detail in terms of message, whereby if you see user initially sent the credential to the firewall, the USG firewall will then send an access request on behalf user to the radius server. The radius server will actually counter check and compare with the local database that resides in the radius. A message access accept will be sent to the firewall from the server in case the verification is done successfully. So when the verification done successfully, then firewall will request the radius server to start performing the accounting process in order for the radius server to request the track record of the user activity. Well, the radius server will later on reply with the accounting response message to indicate that radius server is ready to perform rec, uh, tra keep track of activity. So from here, user can start to access the resources. So after the user finished accessing the resource, the firewall will issue an accounting request stop message. This message will indicate to radius server that the recording of user activity is no longer needed. The radio server will then reply with the accounting response messages to stop the recordings of user activity. A firewall will actually receive this accounting response message and then notify that the access is terminated to the user. Next, we have another third-party authentication server, which is called HWTACAS. HWTACAS stands for Huawei Terminal Access Controller Access Control System. So HWTACAS is actually originated from TACAS. So Huawei developed their own version of TACAS by improving whatever TACAS has. TACAS is an older authentication protocol that actually similar to Unix network, which will allow a remote access server to forward a user log on password or even credential to an authentication server to determine whether the access should be permitted under the environment. So what you can see over here is the uh, application scenario for HW Takas. So 
you can see that initially, if the user tried to access to the system and using the HW Taka server as a third party authentication server, initially, the user will log in themselves. So when they log in themselves, the USG firewall will initiate the authentication process to begin. Send by sending a message to the Taka server. The Taka server will then respond to the message and request for the username. Once the firewall receives this request, firewall will then request the credential from user. The credential over here will be the username. User will then key in their username and send to the firewall. Firewall will help to send on behalf the authentication message of the username for the user to the server. The server will then respond by sending a response authentication message to the firewall, which indicates that the subsequent credential is needed. So firewall will request the subsequent credential which is the password. User will then key in their password. And once again, the USG firewall will send the password to the server by using the authentication persistent message. A response message will be generated by the TACA server to indicate whether the authentication is done successfully. Once authentication done successfully, authorizations will be granted based on the request and reply message between the firewall and Taka server. So once firewall receive the authorizations message, then only the user will be successful log in to the system. So what you can see over here is actually the differences between HW Takas and Radius. The primary functional difference between Radius and Takas is that Takas usually will separate the authorizations functionality, where this doesn't happen in Radius because Radius will combine both authentication and authorizations. In terms of port, HW Takas will use Transmission Control Protocol TCP, which is a much more reliable protocol. For Radius, as mentioned early on, they use UDP. And there are some allocated ports for the Radius authentication and authorizations. So the port number could be 1812, 1813, or 1645, 1646. In terms of encryptions for the packets, in TACAS, the device will encrypt the packets except the TACAS header. And in RADIUS, RADIUS only encrypt the password inside the packet. In terms of authentication and authorizations, this is mentioned somewhat earlier on just now, where the authentication and authorization is separated in TACAS and combined in RADIUS. In terms of applications for the third-party server, HW TACAS is much more suitable for the access control for security purposes while Radius is more towards accounting. When we talk about the uh, configuration of command for authorizations, HW Takas support the configuration command for authorizations, meanwhile Radius does not. Next, we have LDAP 
LDAP stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. This is actually an open, vendor neutral, industrial standard application protocol. The function of LDAP is for the purpose of assessing and maintaining distributed directory information services over the IP network. It is originated from the X.500. So what you can see over here is actually the basic concept of LDAP. So LDAP arranged everything in a tree structure that you can see in the previous slide. So in LDAP, basically there are several terms that we need to identify. Firstly, we have Directory Information Tree, DIT, which referring to the collection of directory entry. An entry will basically refer to the nodes in the DIT, Directory Information Tree. And it brings a series of attributes. Attribute will describe the feature of an object. Basically, something has to do with the type of attribute and the value that it carries. And in LDAP, we also will have the relative distinguished name, RDN, which uniquely defines the child record of an entry. A DN, or distinguished name, we uniquely identify an entry inside our information tree. For example, let's say our DN distinguished name. A DN has a unique name that identifies the entry and respective hierarchy. So the LDAP process authentication is as follow. Firstly, a user that wish to enter the system will need to key in their username and password in order for them to begin a login request. The firewall will then establish a TCP connection with the LDAP server. Firewall will also send a binding request message which carry the administrative DN as well as the password to the LDAP server. This is for the purpose to get the query permissions. So if let's say the request message is successfully sent, then the server will send a bind reply message. So after the binding succeeds, the LDAP server will ask the uh, firewall to provide the username. So firewall will use the username entered by the user to send a user DN search request message to the LDAP server. The LDAP server, once they receive, they will check for the user base on the user DN. If the checking is succeeds, then the LDAP server will send a search reply message to indicate that the user is inside the database. Firewall will also send a user DN bind request and wait for the bind reply from the LDAP server. Once the bind reply is sent by the LDAP server, the authorizations will be granted and the firewall will notify the user that the user has successfully logged into the system. 
So what you can see over here are the user authentication classifications that comes under the AAA technology. Basically, we have the local authentication where the authentication is performed in the local firewall and server authentication which use the third-party authentication server. SSO, single sign-on, is something that we use commonly nowadays. Example, whenever you sign in using your username and password to a third-party authentication server, the, after your authentication done successfully, the authentication server will send the user identity information to firewall. The firewall will then record user identity information, but they do not perform authentication. The most common example of SSO will be example your Google account. Once you sign in to your Google account, you can basically access to your Google Calendar, Gmail, as well as your Google related application without need to further sign in to every application one by one. And lastly, you also have the SMS authentication. So SMS authentication is the method whereby the user will need to log in to the portal authentication page and request for the SMS verification code. So the only the authentication will only succeed if the user enter the correct verification code that come from the SMS.